session of legal empowerment through interaction lecture series today we are going to sketch up on a wonderful topic hiba or rather muslim gift and uh, today we are privileged with the presence of uh, uh, this is uh, ramushan sir and all of you wonderful participants and to introduce the subject we have uh, uh, a judge of the honorable high court of uh, kerala honorable mr justice kauzer dr kauzer edpagat and dealing with the subject will be our own corner that is justice ram kumar sir so without wasting so, any back, time may backbone boy karnavar hai ah uh, backbone has now become karnavar also kasalendu <laughs> bonena session so i i would i would request uh, uh, dr justice uh, kausar edapak sir to render the uh, introductory remarks thank you sham kelkalo sham sure sure we can uh, good morning uh, ramrasha sir justice ramrasha sir justice uh, ram kumar sir and good morning all Good morning. I'm so happy that I could once again associate with this legendary uh, law lecture series organized by Shambhatman Associates. And today's topic, as said, is Muslim gift. Though secular secularism is a concept enshrined in the Constitution of India, various personal laws administered in our country is religion based. and so far as the personal laws of other religions other than the muslims are concerned all their personal laws are god these things are governed by hindu hindu marriage act christians are governed by christian marriage act in indian laws and pasi the voice is breaking off ബ്രേക്ക് <laughs> ൂഷൻ various personal laws administered in our country is purely religion based and so far as the personal laws of uh, other religions other than the muslims are concerned all their personal laws are codified hindus buddhists and jains are governed by hindu succession act and hindu marriage act christians are governed by christian marriage act and indian divorce act and parsis are governed by parsi marriage and divorce act and so far as the muslims are concerned they are predominantly governed by uncodified muslim personal law section 2 of the 1937 sharia application act only says that in questions relating to marriage divorce intestate succession gift guardianship etc the parties are muslims muslim personal law shall, personal law shall apply so the gift is governed by muslim gift is governed by uncodified muslim person a muslim can divorce his property in various ways muslim law permits the transfer of property in the wives which includes gift or hiba or through testamentary succession wasiyat or will a deposition in the wives is unrestricted as to the quantum and a muslim is allowed to give away his entire property during his lifetime by gift but only one third of the total of his property can be bequeathed by a will 
Conventionally, a gift being a transfer of property is governed by the Transfer of Property Act, Chapter 7, Section 123 to 129. But Chapter 7 of the TP Act regulating the gift does not apply to the Muslim, Section 129. Not that it doesn't apply to the Muslims, what the section says. Nothing in the chapter, nothing in the chapter 7 shall be deemed to affect any Muslim personal law. So whenever there is any conflict between Muslim personal law and chapter 7, the Muslim personal law shall prevail. That's all. We know that under section 123, for a valid gift, it must be writing, attestation, attested and registered. Three conditions are there. Of course, if it is above 100 rupees. But a peculiar feature of Muslim gift is that it can be oral as well. To quote the words of uh, Justice V.R. Krishna here, a Muslim gift may be valid even without a registered document and may be invalid even with a registered document. Because what is necessary to constitute a valid, valid gift under Muslim law is three conditions. One declaration, to acceptance and delivery of post. So even if a gift is put into writing, attested and registered, if these three conditions are not satisfied, it becomes invalid. But even if there is no attestation, there is no writing, even if there is a writing, there is no attestation. And even if it has attested, but there is a registration, still the gift is valid if these three conditions, declaration, acceptance, and delivery of prostitution is there. Section 17, one of the registration act says what are the documents to be registered. Of course, it takes in gift as well. And section 49 of the registration act deals with the effect of non-registration. says that if a document required by law to be registered under section 17, if not registered, that document shall not take effect and shall not be used before any court of law as an evidence. So interesting question arose before uh, various high courts, including Kerala Court as well as Supreme Court. What is the legal status of a Muslim gift not registered or attested in view of section 17, 1 and 49? And Justice V.R. Krishna in an interesting decision as early as in 1971, Hassan Rao's case differentiated between secular and non-secular gifts. Just as V.R. Krishna in felt, that is, the situation is 71 KLT 684, 71 KLT 684. The exemption to Muslim gift from the provisions of section 123, as per section 129, applies to secular gift only and not to non-secular gift. Just as V.R. Krishna has said that, a, Muslim, a gift by a Muslim paramour to a mistress cannot be justified on godly grounds. That is a classic decision in which the applicability of Section 13, Article 13 of the Constitution and its amenability to the Constitution, the amenability of the uh, personal laws to the Constitution was extensively discussed. And it was felt that all uncodified Muslim law also is amenable to the Constitution, which is now now upheld by the constitutional bench of the Supreme Court in latest Sarah Burns case. But this difference, the, the, this, uh, dif, uh, I mean, uh, the distinction made between secular and non-secular gift by Justice V. R. Krishna has not been followed in other decision. And ultimately, the Supreme Court finally said in 2017, IR 2017-1965, IR 2017-1965, that all Muslim gifts, whether it is secular or not secular, need not be in writing, need not be attested, and need not be registered. If it is, it is valid, if three conditions are satisfied, declaration, acceptance, and delivery. So, a Muslim gift need not be in writing, need not be attested, need not be registered, need not be contemporaneous, nothing, but what is required to be established? Three conditions, declaration, delivery of position, and acceptance. That's all. Another important feature of uh, Muslim law of gift is gift of Musha. That is, uh, 
it literally means confusion and it is a gift relating to undivided property it attracts when one co-share or uh, give the property to another co-share co this principle makes partial restriction or restraint of uh, gift by motion yet another interesting feature of uh, muslim gift is marzul mouth that is death bed gift gift made during death illness a gift made by a person when the death is imminent the muslim law says that in such circumstances the gift will take effect the form of will only one third restriction in the case of a will will follow that too to uh, strangers these are the various uh, peculiar features of muslim law with this uh, i'll conclude my introductory remarks i'm sure that just as uh, ram uh, just as ram kumar sir a backbone or caravana karana or whatever it is who is well versed with the subject deal with all these aspects of muslim law uh thank you thank you very much and have a nice day this is sam kumar sir i'll take leave because i have to travel to kochin from kanno sorry oh long way to go oh, yeah long way to go <laughs> thank you sir thank you yeah. thank you this is kausar thank you very much and uh, uh, it was indeed wonderful for you to encapsulate uh, the uh, nuances of uh, a muslim gift in such a short time and i'm sure that we'll have a detailed deliberation while addressing the different uh, specific questions that has been crafted by just sam kumar sir for today's session thank you very much thank you for uh, uh, again coming back to littles and we'll be looking forward to see you quite often on in this platform well sure sure thank you thank you thank you ram kumar sir the stage is all yours thank you sham and thank you ko sir Good morning, friends. Good morning, sir. Now we will straight away go to the questions. Uh, this is mainly aimed. It's only an overview, mainly aimed at uh, practitioners, that to beginners, uh, to know the basics of Muslim gift and how to distinguish a Muslim gift from other gift, etc. Shall we go to question number one? Dilip, sir, please. Yes. Question number one. Hiba is a an Arabic word. D, a Persian word. C, an Urdu word. D, a French word. You can definitely say it's not a French word. The other three, I got a confusion. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, arrest and arrester, all those, and uh, wire dryer, they are all French words. But anyway... Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, we can request the students who are here from uh, Christianity College to post the answers if they feel like posting in the chat box. Please go ahead. Hiba. All right, Hiba. He say in Urdu. Aisha and uh, Sanjay Hiba. and others say, uh, "My sir, uh, sir, uh, all of them went for Arabic." Now, <laughs> <laughs> because Muslim law. <laughs> yes, yes. Naturally, they went to Arabia. <laughs> uh, but Muhammad Kanas has got it as uh, Urdu. Urdu. It's an Urdu word, uh, which means gift. Question number two. What is the word for the deed of gift in that language? Deed of gift in that language. Deed of gift in Urdu is Iba Nama. And Iba Nama means a deed of gift. Question three. What is the word for doni in that language? Iba Dar or Atiya Dar. Iba Dar or Atiya Dar is the word used for the word doni. The person who receives the gift. Yes. What is the definition of hiba? You don't find any statutory definition because it is not covered by statute. Hiba is a voluntary transfer inter vivos, that is during lifetime between living persons, without consideration of a property or the substance of a thing, by one person called the donor to another person called the doni, so as to constitute that other person, that is doni. the proprietor of the subject matter of the gift the beautiful definition by said amir ali given in commentary on mohammedan law again it was uh, referred to by the supreme court in abdul rahim versus abdul zabar ar 2010 supreme court 211 ar 2010 supreme court 211 three judges yes we pass on to question number 5 5 Who are, who are the persons capable of making gifts under the Muslim law? Every Muhammadan 
of sound mind and not a minor may dispose of his property by gift that is the first condition second condition is the donor must be the owner of the property he is gifting he cannot gift somebody else's property he has to gift his own property these are the two conditions you may refer to mohammed abdul ghani versus fakir jahan begum ay 1922 privy council 281 the leading case on the point then came uh, ay 1929 privy council 149 ay 1929 privy council 149 now uh, it is all referred to in in paragraph 149 of mulla on principles of mohammedan law mulla 22nd edition then in the case of a muslim woman a muslim woman who has attained majority and is of sound mind has the same right to make a gift as a muslim male and her marriage does not entail any disabilities in this regard this is what the uh, kerala court speaking through this humble self observed in uh, laila bv versus uh, sumina alia uh, somaiya 2009 3 kc 661 2009 volume 3 kc 661 then the the uh, on the question whether the, as to the whether the donor should be the owner of the property gifted so supreme court itself has spoken abdul rahim versus abdul zabar i already given you citation ar 10 ar 2010 supreme court 211 three judges question 6 sir we all know what a minor is is there any distinction or difference when it comes to uh, the context of a muslim gift but you are age of 18 under the pristine mohammedan law a muslim who had attained the age of 15 years was competent to make a valid disposition of his property that is what uh, mohammedan law by amir ali says volume uh, 1 pages 42 and 43 fourth edition 1912 edition i don't think the the subsequent editions are available but this rule of mohammedan law has been superseded by the provisions of the Indian Majority Act, 1875, in in except in respect of marriage, dower, divorce, and adoption. In the in these cases, the the pristine Muslim law will prevail. Hence, minority in the case of Mohammedan, for the purpose of wills, gifts, vacuums, etc., does not terminate on completion of 15th year. It but only on completion of the 18th year, as per the provisions of the. Indian Majority Act, Indian uh, Majority Act, 1875, it was replaced by a subsequent Act. 73 years. Yes, the, you may refer to Para 115 of Principles of Mohammedan Law by Mullah, 22nd edition. And again, Supreme Court has spoken. Mahbub Sahab versus Said Ismail. Mahbub Sahab versus Said Ismail. A year 1995 Supreme Court, 1205, 1205. Question, sir. Uh, sir, with regard to that, if the guardian is appointed, the majority will be only by twenty-one. Twenty-one. Because of that is because of the provisions of the Act. 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 Yes. Question, sir. Number seven. Is it not necessary that in order to be a valid Muslim gift of immobile property, being a transfer property, should be in writing and effected by a registered instrument signed by or on behalf of the donor? And attested by at least two witnesses as provided under Section 123 of the Transfer Property Act, 1882. As was stated by Mr. Kavsar, no, the, it is it need not those provisions need not be complied with for becoming a Muslim leave, gift to be valid. Chapter seven, including Section 123 of the Transfer Property Act, 1882, has no application to any rule of Mohammedan law regarding gifts. This is being in view of section 129 of the Transfer of Property Act. 129 of TP Act expressly says so. The citations on the point are right from 1980, 28 onwards. A year 1928, Privy Council 108. That is corresponding to 55 Indian appeals, 171 Privy Council. Then uh, the Mahbub Sahab versus Said Ismail also. A year 1995, Supreme Court 1205. Again, Laila B V versus uh, Sumina. That is K two thousand nine three K H C six six one. Then Hafiza B V versus Shaikh two thousand A year two thousand eleven Supreme Court one six nine five one six nine five. 
it is here that uh, i will have a reference to make a reference to justice r krishnayar's judgment which was referred to by mr kausar justice r krishnayar has as he then was the kerala high court in paragraph 7 and 8 of asan rautar versus amu uma 1971 kld 684 corresponding to air 1972 kerala 27 had held that a muslim gift need not be in writing and even if it is in writing it need not be it is not compulsorily registrable in para 8 it is noted as uh, already observed a muslim gift may be valid even without a registered deed and may be invalid even with a registered deed registration does not validate the gift registration has nothing to do with the validity of the muslim gift it has to stand on its own legs the learner judge had not agreed with the view that there could be a distinction in which a deed of good gift could effect an immovable and immediate transfer of ownership and another deed of gift could merely record a past gift that is uh, we generally make note of two things a, a post a past transaction being referred to in a document and the document itself creating a, a transaction his lordship said there is no, no such a distinction can be made in the case of muslim gift but uh, there is a contrary view a division bench of the kerala high court without reference to asan rautar had held that oral muslim gifts are valid and do not require registration but if the gift deed has been reduced to writing and if it relates to immovable property worth more than 100 rupees then section 17 of the registration act is attracted and the document is compulsorily registrable that's a division bench ruling imbichi moidin gutti versus patuma umma 1988 1 KLT 409 corresponding to AIR 1989 to Kerala AIR 1989 Kerala 148 by Justice U L Butt and K G Balakrishnan both are eminent judges great judges the view of Justice R Krishnayar was however subsequently accepted and approved by the Supreme Court in Hafiz Hafiza Bivi Hafiza Bivi was a Sheikh Farid. A year 2011 Supreme Court 1695. A year 2011 Supreme Court 1695. In the light of this binding precedent by the Supreme Court, imbichi imbichi moiding guti may not be good law. The Supreme Court ruling of the Kerala High Court may not be good law. But uh, Justice Vijay Krishna here view stands uh, resurrected or stands uh, approved at the hands of the Supreme Court. Yes. Sir, so as of now, the position is that whether it is reduced into writing or not is of no consequence. Yes. Even if the written document says that there was an oral gift earlier, it need not be registered. Or even if the written document says that I hereby make a gift, if that document itself may create a gift, gift there also it, it need, need not be registered. Ram, yes, is Ram Kumar and appeared for the party here. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Then, would you please enlighten us on what are the essential requirements or what are the essentials of a valid Muslim gift? Yes. In order to be a valid Muslim gift, there are three requirements. One, a declaration, a declaration of the gift manifesting the intention on the part of the donor to give property by gift. Second, an acceptance of the gift, express or implied by or on behalf of the donee. And thirdly. delivery of possession of the subject matter of the gift actual or constructive by the donor to the donee or taking possession of the subject matter of the gift by the donee either actually or constructively third is either delivery by the donor or take acceptance of the possession by the donee the citations are right from privy council ar 1922 privy council 281 A year 1922 Privy Council 281, A year 1929 Privy Council 149, A year 1929 Privy Council 149. Then Abdul Rahim vs Abdul Zabar, A year 2010 Supreme Court 211, three judges. Then of course my own decision 2009 three KHC 661. Then Hafiza Bibi vs Sheikh Farid, A year 2011 Supreme Court 1695. Then in para six of Makbul Alam Khan versus Khadija, A R 1966 Supreme Court 1194, three judges of the Apex Court, there are three judges. The the it was said that they quoted the 
great observation of Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad had said, a gift is not valid without ceasing. Without ceasing. The rule of law is, gifts are rendered valid by tender, acceptance and ceasing. The words of Prophet Muhammad. Tender and acceptance are necessary because a gift is a contract. And tender and acceptance are requisite in the formation of all contracts. And ceasing is necessary in order to establish a right of property in the gift because a right of property according to our doctors is not established in the thing given merely by means of the contract without ceasing. Ceasing is an important essential aspect of the, uh, of, of a, of the, the gift that where a gift has been given, whether the donee has accepted that, whether there has been delivery of actual possession. Hamilton's had a, this is uh, the, you will find this in the Grady's edition of Hamilton's Hedaya at page 482, page 482. Then also made reference by the Supreme Court in Abdul Rahim versus Abdul Zabar, year 2010 Supreme Court, 211, three judges. Again, uh, Justice Krishna had also mentioned in Asan Rauter, 71 KLT, 1971 KLT 684, held that de declaration of the gift need not be a formal statement, but can be made out by conduct also. And it is not a ritual, but a reality. So in the words of Justice Krishna here, it is not a mere ritual, but a reality. Therefore, declaration, uh, the, the um, essentials of a declaration, all the essentials need not be proved. It can be assumed or presumed, inferred from conduct of the party solid. Uh, that's only a solitary decision by Justice Krishna. So I have not come across any other ruling which says that declaration can be by conduct or Question number nine. Sir, on that context, can I just put one doubt? Yes. So, what is the quantum or nature of evidence then that might be required to prove these three elements? Yeah, oral oral gift very difficult. But then, uh, in one privy council, the Supreme Court, the privy council has noted that in a in a in a uh, banquet at a banquet, the donor had made an open declaration that I have given gift of this property to so and so. That was considered as the declaration. And uh, the acceptance also by the Doni in that uh, assembly. And then the Doni was uh, keeping possession of the property. From that, more, it was, more or less to be inferred from the circumstances and parallel. Yes. But then, uh, why, why the Muslim law insists on all these three ingredients very scrupulously? We will come to. Yes. There's a reason. There's a reason. Of course, uh, Mr. Kauser had mentioned about that. Yes. That exactly is the next question. Why is it that the Muhammadan law insists on strict adherence? Strict adherence to the essential to the valid Muslim gift. Yes. A Muhammadan cannot, by a testamentary instrument, dispose of among his heirs more than one third of his surplus, surplus of his estate, after payment of funeral expenses and debts. Because in excess of the above one third cannot take effect unless the heirs consent to the bequest after the death of the estate. The other heirs also should consent to the bequest. Otherwise, the gift will be valid, uh, invalid beyond the one-third. Yeah. Uh, if the bequest exceeds the legal heir and the heirs of the testator refuse their consent, the bequest will abate. The uh, bequest will abate. And if there are more bequests, they will abate rateably. Para 118 and 119 of Mullah's principles of Muhammadan law. Whereas 118 and 119. Because under the Muslim personal law, a Muslim cannot give away more than one third of his property by way of testamentary disposition. So as per a will, he cannot, he can give only up to one third. So there, there were there was a practice or a habit that they used to uh, violate this personal law requirement by effecting gift deeds. What I cannot give by will, I can, I can give by gift. That was the attitude of some, some persons. Well, because if I am going to execute a will deed, then I will have to be I will have to restrict it to one third. But there is no such restriction if I am going to give a, a gift. Therefore, they used to uh, um, circumvent that uh, personal law requirement by executing gifts. Uh, this is also referred to in Paragraphs 118 and 119 of Mullah. Then outlines of Mohammedan law by Triple A C, Triple A C fourth edition. Therefore, if he were to dispose of his property by way of a gift, 
by violating the limit on his testamentary power and thereby indirectly defeating the policy of Mohammedan law, the law insists upon strict proof of the requirement, formalities of a valid gift. The Privy Council had occasion to refer to this in 1876, mind you, way back in 1876. Kajurunisa, Kajurunisa versus Rustam Jahan, Rustam Jahan, 1876 ILR to Calcutta 184, corresponding to three Indian appeals, three Indian appeals, 291. In fact, the, the Privy Council observed the policy of Mohammedan law appears to be to prevent a testator interfering by will with the course of the devolution of property according to law among his heirs, although he may give a specific portion as, as, as much as a third to a stranger. But it also appears that a holder of a property may, to a certain extent, defeat the policy of the law by giving in his lifetime the whole or any part of his property to one of his sons, provided he compels with he complies with the other forms. It is incumbent, however, upon those who seek to set up a proceeding of this sort, sort to show very clearly that the forms of Mohammedan law, whereby its policy is defeated, see the forms of Mohammedan law whereby its policy is defeated, have been complied with in, as per the strict requirements of law. Notable ex expression by the Privy Council. This is the reason why strict adherence to the essentials of a valid Muslim gift is insisted by courts. When a, proper, when a party sets up a gift in his favor, the burden of proof is on the party who sets up the gift in his favor. Uh, he will have to show that the rigid forms of the uh, Muslim law have been complied with. Laila B.V. is one illustration, 2009, 3 KHC 661, rendered by the humble self. But even here, it is, it is, if it is a merciful mouth, if it is a merciful mouth, death with gift, entire property cannot be gifted. It, it will be valid only up to one third, as in the case of a will. It will Marcel be treated as a will. Yeah, almost, it, it has to be treated as a will. So it is a, of course, the requirements of delivery, um, declaration, acceptance, delivery, possession, all those things have to be satisfied. But then, it will be valid only up to one third. So, uh, Veera, uh, this is referred to by, by, by Travancore question, I quote, Virangutti versus Jainuddin, Virangutti versus Jainuddin, ILR 1955 TC, ILR 1955 TC, 863, Division Bench, Koshi, Chief Justice and Kumar Abhile. Chief Justice Koshi and Kumar Abhile. Then we come to the rules of Muslim law alone applicable if the subject matter of the gift is immovable property. Question number 10.1. Yes, uh, that is, uh, if uh, these ingredients are to be complied with, and if it's the corpus alone, is there any distinction between uh, income, usufrex, etc.? Yes, there seems to be a distinction between corpus and uh, usufrex or income. Uh, the, the, the donor should effect an immediate transfer of the corpus, which is, which is called ayn, A-Y-N, ayn in Urdu, ayn of the property given in gift without reserving any dominion over the corpus. He should not exercise any more dominion over the corpus after the gift. After the gift, he should not exercise any sort of dominion over the corpus. But he can say that I will continue to take the income or you, I will take the use of rights from the property. It's life estate, the, just like life estate. You life, not even like that. For example, supposing there are fruit bearing trees, I will be taking the use of rights from those trees. But I am leaving the property a corpus as such as the subject matter of this gift. Where the donor gives a gift of corpus and does not reserve any dominion over the corpus. He does not thereafter reserve any dominion over the corpus, but merely retains his right to take produce or income or usufrak. Usufrak is called manafi. In Urdu, usufrak is called manafi. Corpus is called ayn, A-Y-N. From the property, the gift is valid. Why do you nawab Umjad Ali Khan versus Muhumdi Begum. 11 Moors Indian Appeals 517, Privy Council. 11 Moors Indian Appeals 517. Then Muhammad Abdul Khani Khan versus Fakir Jahan, AR 1922, Privy Council 281. Again, Kerala decision is there by Justice Velupillai. Yes, Velupillai. Haji Kunju 
Mamadu versus Asi Kuti. 1959 KLT 624 by Judges Velu Pillai. So, yes. sir, uh, if you want to defeat that bequeathable one third in a will, if you uh, 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 try to give it by a gift, uh, then you will have to run the risk of giving the property then and there to the person. And yes. run because the it is a transfer inter vivos Correct. during the lifetime Correct. of the donor so, and donee. Unless and until you are 101% sure, you should not be interesting in it. That is the distinction between will and a gift. Correct. A while, a, while a will takes effect only on the death of the testator. That is why it is called ambulatory in character. But uh, the case, to, to the limited extent, you can have a conditional will by reserving the in, uh, rather uh, produce. Yes. <laughs> 10.2. Yes. What is the position if in spite of a gift of the corpus, the donor retains dominion over the corpus? So, Where the donor retains possession of the corpus, in his own right, his own right, despite the gift and reserves to himself the right to enjoy the same, such a gift would be invalid. Uh, K.S. Mohammed Aslam Khan versus Khalilul Rahman Khan, A.R. 1947, Privy Council, page 97. A.R. 1947, Privy Council, page 97. Again, Nawazish Ali Khan versus Ali Rasa Khan. These are all tongue twisters. <laughs> a year 1948 Privy Council 134. A year 1948 Privy Council 134. Then Haji Kunju Mamadu versus Asi Kuti 1959 KLT 624. 1959 KLT 624. Picha Kannu versus Aliyar Kunju 1963 KLT 226. 1963 KLT 226. Then Mohammed Abdul Khani. Versus Fakir Jahan Begum, A year 1922, Privy Council 281. Then Bipa and others versus Mohammed Nakur Meera Rauta, A year 1977, Kerala, A year 1977, Kerala 5454. All these decisions refer to this where the, he the, the, continues to keep dominion over the corpus, then the gift will be invalid. Question 10.3. What is the consequence of an absolute gift given and a condition repugnant to the grand so made? Yes. Now, this, in fact, this principle uh, contradicts with the earlier principle. The earlier principle says if the entire corpus is given as a gift, and in spite of that, the donor retains possession of the corpus or does something contrary to the uh, recitals in the gift, then the, the, the gift will be invalid. Now, here the, 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 it says, where an absolute gift of the property is given with a clause prohibiting alienation by the donee, the said clause which is repugnant to the absolute grant will be treated as void. Okay. Section, 10, section 10 will come then. Something okay. like section 10. Uh, the clause will be taken as repugnant and void, not the gift. Abdul Kafur versus Nizamuddin, uh, 19 Indian Appeals, page 170, Privy Council. Corresponding to ILR 17, Bombay 1, Privy Council. Then where a condition repugnant to the whole enjoyment of the gifted property is attached to the gift, the condition would be treated as bad and not the grant. Nawab Umjad Ghani Khan versus Mahmudi Begum, uh, 11 Moors Indian Appeals, 11 MIA, page 517, Privy Council. 11 Moors Indian Appeals, 517. Then, a condition inconsistent with the absolute dominion over the subject matter of the gift will be rejected as repugnant. Nawash is Ali Khan versus Ali Raza Khan, year 1948, Privy Council 134. And there's a Kerala decision also, Maidin B.V. Uma, Maidin B.V. Uma versus Ita Piri Varki, year 1956, Travangur Cochin 268, 56, Travangur Cochin 268, corresponding to 1956 KLT 444. 1956 KLT 444. Then, now we can pass on to the whether delivery of possession given and taken, whether it, it, it is a must for completion of the gift. Question 11.1. Is a gift incomplete if delivery of possession is not given or taken? Yes, but that is one of the essential ingredients of a valid Muslim gift. Therefore, if delivery of possession is not completed, during the lifetime of the donor, it is invalid. The gift is invalid. A gift is not complete unless possession is given and taken at the time of gift. 
that is at the time of declaration and acceptance mulani maula baksh 1924 alabar 370 it is essential to the validity of muslim gift that there should be a delivery of such possession as the subject matter of the gift is susceptible of sadik hussain versus hashim ali year 1916 privy council year 1916 privy council page 27 question 11.2 sir uh, uh, we understood that uh, delivery of physical possession if not given it will become invalid is there any concept for example constructive possession so you are coming to that we are coming to that that is a question sir yes. can the delivery of possession yes. be, uh, if cause or physical possession cannot be given at the time of gift will it be sufficient if constructive possession is given yes because for such possession as the property is susceptible of that is the uh, requirement of muslim law yes gift of equity of redemption for example equity of redemption can form the subject matter of a gift nuru muhammad versus sultan pillai 1955 klt 865 decision by justice joseph 1955 klt 865 then if the donor has done all within his power to divest himself and put the dowry in possession that would be sufficient whatever is possible within the within the power of the donor has been done and to put the donor in possession that is enough a year 1974 patna 54 division bench a year 1974 patna 54 again patna decision a year 1981 patna page 291 then even if the property gifted is in the possession of a trespasser if the possession of a trespasser such a gift is permissible in law provided the donor either obtains and gives possession of the property to the donee or does all that he can put the property within the power of the donee to obtain possession abdul rahim versus abdul zabar supreme court year 2010 supreme court 211 year 2010 supreme court 211 then if the property is in the possession of a lessee or a mortgagee delivery of constructive possession of the property to the donee would serve the purpose year 2010 supreme court 211 abdul rahim versus abdul zabar then where the property is in the occupation of a tenant a gift of the property will be completed by request made by the donor to the tenants to atone to the donee the donor can te- tell the tenant you may atone to the donee here after pay the rent recognize the donee as the as your landlord allah rakha versus ali mohammed year 1929 lahore year 1929 lahore 45 where an oral gift of the property in possession of complainant's tenant was followed by a donor asking the tenant to atone to the donee the gift was held to be valid by it was a decision by delhi high court afiz abdul basit versus ahmed nian year 1973 delhi 280 year 1973 delhi 280 now we pass on to 11.3 can the delivery of possession be postponed yes because the basic requirement is delivery acceptance etc should be immediate immediate after the um, um, declaration but then but possession taken on the subsequent date is sufficient if it is taken with the consent and during the lifetime of the donor one decision of the oud high court oud court uh, year 1931 oud page 7 year 1931 oud page 7 jumman versus hussein jumman versus hussein question 11.4 what is the classical requirement of muslim law regarding the handing over of the property gifted the beautiful the position the classical requirement is that donor should physically depart from the premises with all his goods chattels etc and the donee should formally enter into possession donor should go out of the property with all his chattels movable move, everything and the donee should then enter possession that is a they convince the classic requirement of handing over of posters magnaton uh, will have reference to this at page 231 the donor must completely divest himself of the ownership ismail rauter versus kunju rauter 1964 1 volume 1 klr 326 division bench 1964 1 klr 326 we pass on to 11.5 are there exceptions to the above classical requirement of muslim gifts and what are they there are there are there are exception to the classical requirement of muslim law 
that the donor should physically depart from the property with all his chattel and the donee should enter the property likewise the one 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 uh, exception is where the donor and donee are residing oh, together yes. in the gifted property residing together in the gifted property where where they are both residing in the property but the declaration should be very very much uh, discernible the declaration that he is gifting the property that should be discernible and uh, the it is not necessary and uh, uh, no physical departure by the donor or formal entry by the donee is necessary the classical requirement need not be complied with uh, the citations are sheikh ibrahim versus sheikh suleiman 1884 9 bombay 146 9 bombay 146 again jamil jamil un nisa versus mohammad zia year 1937 allahabad 547 year 1937 allahabad 547 then uh, nawrazi versus nafaz ali shah year 1939 patna 321 321 i am coming to kerala later <laughs> then ashia ummal versus vasanti 1964 klt 844 1964 klt 844 division bench aishi bv versus mohammad ali year 1964 madras 309 there their donor and donee were living together then ctda patuma versus poku year 1998 kerala 134 where the donor and donee reside together in the property gifted at the time of gift the law does not insist on physical departure all those thing but there should be a clear intention on the part of the donor to transfer possession to the donee that should be discernible from the conduct or whatever that may be mulla para 152 3 para 152 dr tahir mohammed at page 203 point number 9 also discusses this Abdul Razak Sahib versus Zainabi A year 1933 Madras 86 A year 1933 Madras 86 then Sheikh Ibrahim versus Sheikh Suleiman ILR 9 Bombay ILR 9 Bombay 146 then Humaira Bibi versus Najim Nisha Bibi ILR 28 Allahabad 147 ILR 28 Allahabad 147 Privy Council is there Mama me and another versus calendar amal calendar amal year 1927 bc double two year 1927 bc double two then madras i quote again kandath vittil bawa versus musaliam musaliam vittil pakrukutti ilr 30 madras 305 ilr 30 madras 305 must be from kerala <laughs> maidin bv uma uh, maidin bv uma versus itta peri varki I L 1956 K L T triple four. I already given you citation. The other, then Abdul Rasak Rasak Sahib versus Sainaba 1932 Madras Weekly Notes 1178 1178. Then Kerala decision. Umma Umma versus Varki 1956 K L T triple four. Koshi Chief Justice and Ayanga. In all the above cases, it has been held that the mere fact that donor continues to reside with the donee. will not constitute non delivery of the possession so as to invalidate the gift you may also uh, refer to humaira bv versus najam un nisa 28 allahabad 147 on the nephew they were not uh, they were relatives also on the nephew both residing together then bb cover versus bb rukia 29 bombay 468 gift to daughter in law and her children which is not normally done give to <laughs> and her children then kandoth versus uh, musaliam 1907 30 madras 305 mother to daughter then even where the donee reside with the donor in the gifted property if there is a stipulation in the deed that donor and donee shall be in joint possession it will not satisfy the requirement see gift both gift is uh, in respect of property where both are residing together but there is a stipulation in the deed that donor and donee shall continue to deal with the property they shall be in joint possession etc then the gift is invalid this is what the kerala high court said in pichakannu versus aliyar kunyu 1963 klt 226 1963 klt 226 justice velu pillai 
there are many decisions by justice very pulley and kumar pulley and uh, um, the chief justice koshi also where the gift is by father or by guardian to a minor that is another exception second exception gift is by father or guardian to a minor then even if they are reside, not residing together uh, gift by the father or uh, guardian to minor where the gift is by father or guardian in favor of minor no transfer of property is necessary to the donee these decisions are amid kutti versus ismalu 1981 klt 918 1981 klt 918 then valiya pediya kanni uh, kadisha umma and others versus patak patakalan narayat kunya 90 ar 60 supreme court ar 1964 supreme court 275 from kerala ar 1964 supreme court 275 then official receiver kori court versus t moidin koya 1969 klr 508 then abdul rahim sahib versus zinat b and others 1963 madras 186 a year 1963 madras 186 that also must have been from kerala because from malabar area the probably probably went, from malabar ah uh, malabar area appeal went to madras high court then third third exception where a donor is where the donor is not the father or guardian of the minor or lunatic where the donor is not the father of we have seen father or guardian but here the donor is not a father or guardian where a gift to a minor or to a lunatic is made by a person other than the father or guardian such gift may be completed by delivery of possession to the father or guardian of the donee father or guardian of the minor gift can be completed by giving handing over possession to the father or guardian of the donee Musa Mia Muhammad Shafi versus Kader Box Shah Box year 1928 Privy Council 108 year 1928 Privy Council 108 then Jumman versus Hussein year 31 1931 out the 7 year 1931 out the 7 then fourth exception is gift by the father and acceptance by the mother that is a gift by the father and then thereafter the father and mother became estranged that was the case uh, decided by the sample self in laila bivi 2009 a gift deed executed by the father in favor of his daughter and children to be and, but uh, unfortunately there is one clause gift not only to the living children but also children to be born uh, to that section the gift was held to be valid to the living children but gift to the uh, to, to the children to be born was held to be invalid and it was held that the property is kept by the mother though during the lifetime of the father who alone is recognized as the guardian of the children uh, was held to be valid because of the strained relationship between the spouses that is uh, laila bivi laila buhari versus sumina alias sumaiya 2009 volume 3 kc 661 661 then fifth fifth exception is gift by husband to wife where the gift is by a muslim husband to his wife physical departure by the donor and handing over possession to the donee is not necessary we are they are virtually living together, living together. <laughs> <laughs> mamia mami versus calendar of umal year 1927 privy council 22 20 AR 1927 Privy Council 22. Then Muhammad Sadiq versus Fakir Jahan AR 1932 Privy Council page 13. Again AR 1927 Privy Council 22, where it was held that where a husband makes a gift of a house to his wife and not to stand in the gift, not to stand the gift, the husband continues to uh, live in the house or continues to receive the rents after the gift. Such contract will not invalidate the gift. and that the presumption in such a case would be that rents are collected by the husband on behalf of the wife and not on his own account delivery of possession in order to complete the gift may be either actual or constructive all that is necessary is relinquishment of control even symbolic possession of property is sufficient to make a valid gift way back in 1927 privy council held so then sixth sixth exception gift to a bailey 
where the subject matter of the gift is already in the possession of the doni as a bailey doni in the capacity of bailey is already in possession of the property the gift may be completed by declaration and acceptance without any formal delivery of possession you will find this in paragraph 157 of principles of mohammedan law some people cite mohammedan law as mullah mohammedan law section Mm. Even in judgments, we find it as section such and such. Because there, in the in the in the book, Mullah uh, Muhammadan Law S one twenty seven S one fifty says is a uh, understood yeah, as section. Section. <laughs> Then uh, seventh uh, exception is minor on attaining majority may himself take possession. Supposing possession was held by the guardian on attaining majority, the minor can take possession. is one exception a gift to a minor will also be complete when the minor after obtaining the age of discretion himself takes possession kadisa umma versus narayambath kunyamu ar 1964 supreme court 275 ar 1964 supreme court 275 uh, then assan kutti versus mohammad gurikel 1961 klt 959 again by justice veli pulle where it was held that the my In fact, this particular decision, Justice Veeri Pulley held that the minor himself can accept the gift during his minority. The property need not be given handed over possession to the guardian of the minor. Minor himself can accept the gift during his minority. We pass on to question number twelve. Uh, as far as possession is given, is mutation necessary? Mutation of the uh, records. one possession is given mutation is only um, um, regularizing the possession in the revenue record that's all for the purpose of uh, gift mutation is not necessary mutation if names is not a condition precedent for the delivery of property in favor of the doni if there is delivery of possession of the gifted property to the doni and if the doni has accepted and taken possession that is enough mutation is a subsequent act to regularize her possession in the in the record revenue record is it not Muhammad Mumtaz versus Zubaida Jan, 16 Indian Appeals 205, Privy Council, 16 Indian Appeal 205. Again, Muhammad Sadiq versus Fakir Jahan, A.R. 1932, Privy Council 13. Mutation of names in the registry. In fact, in one case it was held that my name has been mutated. There is a mutation of my names in the registry. Can it can it can it not be presumed that I have taken delivery? No. The how the court said the mutation cannot be proof of delivery. Mutation of names in the registry cannot be all a valid substitute for delivery of possession. Delivery of possession has to be independently proved. Muhammad Azim versus Saada Kali, A.R. 1931 Aud, 1931 Aud, page 177. Question 13. Is a gift made to an unborn person invalid? Yes. Gift made to an unborn person is invalid. Such a gift is not at all valid, even though a Muslim gift can be made through the medium of trust. A Mohammedan cannot, through the medium of trust, settle property for the benefit of persons who are in incapable of accepting a gift. So there is nobody to accept. Life estates, other than interest in Yusuf Rak, and vested remainders, vested remainders are unknown to Muslim law. Nawaz is Ali Khan versus Ali Rasa Khan, A.R. 1948 Privy Council, page 134. A.R. 1948 Privy Council, page 134. Where I gift? No, no, I'm going, sir. Will it not yes. be exception to a marmagatta a gift? Yes. Even if a Muslim gives as far as Malabar, Malabar is concerned, Malabar marmagatta yes. applicable to them. Yes. Maabala marmagatta. That is because of the putravagasham thavdi, the legal concept of putravagasham thavdi. a mm -hmm. gift is made to made by a nayar husband to a, his nayar wife alone or to his nayar wife and children already there in existence and to be born it annuals to the putravagasham thavdi by virtue of section 48 i think and section 67 of the kochi nayar act but uh, that is a different principle altogether but here we have another family, personal law principle laila bibi versus laila buhari that is my my decision there also it was held in para 151 uh, it was held that a gift to unborn persons is invalid so that section the gift will be void that is all uh, principle of mohammedan law by mullah para 151 also reiterates that 
Then question 14. What is the case if uh, child is in the womb? In one Hindu law case, the Justice Padmanabhan decision is there that a, a child in the womb is also considered to be a living child. But there the requirement of Hindu law is that child, because uh, that was apl applied in the case of Joint Family System Abolition Act. In fact, I argued that case and succeeded. Uh, his lordship held that a, a child in the in Ventress are mere. A child in Ventress are mere is considered to be a living person. It was held so. But uh, we don't know whether those principles will be can be adopted by the I, Muslim law. <laughs> I had occasion to go through an article yesterday, just for before for preparing for your sleep. So I saw that uh, even in Muslim law, a gift in favor of a child which is born or in the womb, which will be born within 18 months. I'm sorry, eight months is one. I see. But uh, you are too early to see whether it is a viable child or not. Yes, if it is aborted or then the void uh, the gift itself becomes that may be the, so it the, is a condition, condition that, gift it will be. That may yes. be the reason why eight months is prescribed. Yes. Once it is eight months, but when supposing it is still born after eight months. Stillborn is not uh, I mean cannot cannot uh, be a living person who can accept. Exactly. So how can we say that gift in favor of a because acceptance, who will accept? <laughs> That's it. But and who will take delivery? The, <laughs> Not the actual delivery. Delivery is the... yes. There is the other delivery. <laughs> if, the, if the child is born alive and he, I mean, uh, lives on, then but at the time of declaration, uh, there is no child living while a person to accept the gift. Child in a womb is deemed as a living child. Maybe, right, but, uh, but who will accept? Acceptance is a condition precedent. That's a, that's a, it's a, Whereas in the un, in the Hindu law principle, there's not, no overtag is necessary on the part of the child in the womb. But here there should be an overtag of acceptance. The that child, will not be there. The acceptance can be by the donor or by the mother or on his behalf. No, only in the case of Abhimanyu and uh, Akravasta, <laughs> it was felt that even in the womb, the child was hearing some something <laughs> and talking. <laughs> we, we let, know us, let, us, let us not get into that chakra view. Huh? We we'll yes. go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> we know situations where even without uh, mating, there can be child born. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Question number 14, sir. Yes. What is meant by musha? Musha is an undivided share in property which may either be movable or immovable property. It means the undivided or common or undivided portions of the property which form the subject matter of a gift. If it is an undivided property of a movable property or an immovable property, then it is called musha. 15. Can there be a gift of musha where the property is indivisible? In fact, a gift of musha is uh, valid only if the property is indivisible. That is the... the a uh, harsh rule of uh, Mohammedan law. A valid gift may be made only of an undivided share, which is not capable of partition. Then only the musha is the gift of musha is valid. Example, gift of an undivided share in a staircase is valid. Gift of an undivided share on the banks of a tank uh, is valid. If the banks are regarded as indivisible, but if they are considered to be indivisible, the, the gift of musha will be invalid. There is one decision by the Calcutta High Court. Allah Baksa versus Mohammed Ali. A year 1935, Calcutta 739. Next question will make the position clear. 16. Can, can there be a gift of Musha where the property is divisible? Yes. As per the pristine Muslim law, if the property is divisible, if the undivided property is divisible, gift of Musha is is not valid or rather but not void it's only irregular it's only irregular the gift being irregular may be perfected and rendered valid by subsequent partition and delivery to the donor of the share given to him uh, in fact uh, justice krishna had taken this view uh, and he he was he was uh, having some reservations about this harsh pristine muslim law supposing a makes a gift of her undivided share in certain lands to b 
the share is not divided at the time of gift but it is subsequently separated and possessively delivered to be the gift though irregular at its inception is validated by the subsequent delivery of possession that is the principle uh, that is how you understand the principle gift of an undivided share musha in a property which is capable of division is only irregular but not void um, uh, at the time uh, in fact yes is krishna here uh, uh, said that it is time that the doctrine of musha which is moribund that is on death bed <laughs> is treated as dead these are the these are the observations of justice krishna here in kp kadar's case kp kadar versus kkp kunyamina 1970 klt 237 sitting in kerala high court justice krishna here said doctrine of musha which is moribund on the death bed it is high time that it is treated as dead <laughs> if gift of undivided share cannot affect the normal enjoyment of property the gift cannot be treated as void ab initio and the gift shall not fail merely for the reason that it is a, a transfer of musha the doni in such a case has a right to super partition this is the very um, practical way in which justice ndp nambudri part father of our justice sir bawdasan uh, held in 1977 klt 193 1977 klt 193 question 78 okay the, you know in such circumstances can it be possible for the doni uh, the donor to say i have not parted possession the gift is invalid as far as he is concerned he is stopped from contending otherwise isn't it you will know, he will be stopped from contending otherwise i am only think thinking so. of possibility i think so <laughs> uh, you will conceive of all such possibilities i know <laughs> <laughs> Question 17. Are there exceptions, if any, to the doctrine of musha in respect to properties which is capable of division and which are void? Yes. Even though a case where in a case where undivided property is divisible, so therefore gift may be invalid. A gift of musha is invalid in the following exceptions, such as uh, a gift will be valid where the gift is made by one co-owner co-heir to another. A Mohammedan female dies, leaving a mother, a son, and a daughter as her only heirs. The mother may make a valid gift to her undivided share, gift of her undivided share, in the inherit in uh, in the inherit uh, in to the son or to the daughter or jointly to a son and daughter. That will be valid. ILR 15 Calcutta 684. There is one exception where the gift is of a share in zamindari or taluka A, B, and C. or co heirs co shares in certain zamindari each share is separately assessed by the government and as a separate number in the collector's book and the prop- proprietor of each share is entitled to collect a definite share of rent from the tenant though it is undivided share virtually there is a division for all practical purposes a makes a gift of his share to z without a partition of the zamindari the gift is valid since it is not strictly a gift of musha the share being definite and marked off from the rest of the property the, the decision is ar 1960 madras 447 ar 1960 madras 447 third illust- third exception is where the gift is of a share in freehold property in a large commercial town nine ar 1949 lahore 238 then fourth exception is where the gift is of shares in land land company in a land company if the shares gift is of the shares you find them in para 60 160 para 160 of principles of mohammedan law by mulla now there are uh, there is a scan. there are not much of a de- decided case question 80 has it been judicially noticed that the doctrine of musha is not adaptable to a progressive society Way back in 1889, Privy Council had observed that doctrine of musha is not a, a, a is not a good for a progressive society. That principle, in fact, that has been referred to. That decision of the Privy Council was referred to by the Calcutta High Court in the year 1935, Calcutta 739. The year 1935, Calcutta 739. Kerala High Court also speaking through Justice Vaidyalingam in Avulla Haji versus Mamu. 
1958 KLT 1184 and observed that it is not adaptable to a progressive society. Doctor Namusha. Yes, question 19. Is a contingent gift valid under the Muslim law? No, a contingent gift is not valid under Muslim law. Uh, it cannot be made. Uh, a gift cannot be made to take effect on the happening of a future contingency. Abdul Kareem versus Abdul Kayam. ILR 28 Calcutta 342. ILR 28 Calcutta. I am sorry. ILR 28 Allahabad. ILR 28 Allahabad 342. Mullahs Muhammad Allah also referred to that. Para 163. Question 20. Sir, what about a gift with a condition? If the condition superseded to, superseded to the grant which has made a been, which has been made absolute, that they, it derogates from the absoluteness of the grant. The condition will be invalid. Again, the other principle. Uh, if, a, sure. if a condition is super added to the absolute grant, then which is repugnant to the grant, then the condition will be treated as repugnant and it will be rejected, not the grant. We have already seen that in under question number 10 3. Now, 21. Can there be a gift of a life estate? Under Muslim law? No, there cannot be a gift of a life estate under Mohammedan law. Oh, right. But where there is a gift of the corpus, there can be a life interest of the usufruct and, and uh, corpus, of such corpus. Life estate of the usufruct, but not to the life estate of the corpus. Kunju Ahmad Pillai versus Patumal, AR 2003 Kerala 217. AR 2003 Kerala 217, corresponding to 2003. 1 KLT 826. 2003, 1 KLT 826. Question number 22. Whether a gift of a property capable of division, if made to two or more persons without specifying their share or without dividing the property, valid? No. Such a gift will be invalid. If the gift may be rendered valid by separate percentage taken by each of the donors of the portion of the property given to him or her. If there is a subsequent arrangement between the donors with regard to the possession of the property gifted. This rule, however, does not apply to a case where gift is of a share in freehold property in a large commercial town, constituting the third exception to a gift of Musha, where we, we saw that property is divisible. Yes. How, 23. how to effect delivery of possession where the property gifted is incorporeal? property or actual victim? Where the subject matter of the gift is incorporeal property or actionable claim, the gift may be completed by any act on the part of the donor showing a clear intention to divest himself in presentee of the property and to confer it upon the donor. A, a one illustration can be a gift of government promissory note may be completed by endorsement and delivery to the donor. Yes, question 24. Iba Shart Ul Iwas. I need a little band. Iba Ba. Iba Ba Shart Ul Iwas. Yes, it is a gift on a stipulation or promise of consideration. It resembles a sale in the first stage before receipt of consideration. And seizing of the property between the donor and donor is an inevitable condition in the case of such a gift. Yes, then. Last question. What is a Hiba bill you want? Hiba bill you want. Hiba bill you want. Hiba bill you want. It is a gift for consideration or exchange. It resembles a sale, but delivery process is not required for completion of the transfer, unlike in the case of Hiba ba shart ul il was. So shart means, shart means condition. Here there is no such a shart. Therefore, it is uh, not necessary. No, can it be said that, to be a can it be said to be a gift then? Because this is a for consideration. Anyway, it is um, there can be a gift. Consideration is love and affection. It is not monetary consideration also can be there, <laughs> but need not <laughs> need not necessarily be adequate. That is why contract rights is merely because there is no adequate consideration. Uh, you you cannot same. go into the question of adequacy to to. Uh, examine the correctness of the document of the transfer. But that may be a circumstance which may uh, say, which may indicate that there was no consensus. 
that's all with that the, the oh, overview of iba is done i don't claim to be an expert on muslim law therefore there may be there may be several aspects to be considered also to be discussed but sir, we'll is, go straight to the basics yeah yes this is ps narana sir is here he has been throughout so narana sir any authoritative treatise by you on uh, muslim gift no sir is it narana yes this is narana sir uh, hello brother yes, narana any here. authoritative uh, you brother <laughs> narana any authoritative book by you on muslim gift no 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 no, no. you see this is uh, so, hmm. so i am <laughs> safe <laughs> uh, this is a subject which I, i have been very carefully following ha uh, uh ram kumar hmm? brother thank brother you. ram thank you brother ram kumar uh, after after a long gap yes. i'm i'm hearing uh, more indian appeals indian cases and all that <laughs> <laughs> you see he, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> now, in, the, in the in the functioning of the legal system nowadays we very rarely we, we come across uh even the learned judges referring to that old decisions of uh, uh, indian cases more indian appeals and exactly, all exactly exactly uh, ah we only yes. certain judge- the judgment will be only three pages no 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 only In certain cases the judgment will be two pages or three pages whereas now we come across 300 pages ah uh, certain judges who who intend to trace the law from the origin and all that ah uh, Uh, out of out of zeal and interest they will be referring to very old decisions otherwise yes uh, in under transfer of property act while, while being a professional i remember uh, ha- having cited a very old decision of 1882 virtually uh, th- those pages are broken pages i was unable to uh, even carry that book <laughs> that is a, that is the year that is the year in which tp act was enacted it is uh, uh, very very old decisions uh, uh, it, it depends upon uh, i think after after a long time uh, i am again hearing uh, the murini appeals and indian cases uh, i am really happy yes. brother ram kumar hmm? thank you okay okay fine okay okay thank you thank you jesus narana sir over to you ramashing sir uh, wherever a subject is entrusted to ram kumar Uh, he will be doing his justice in the way of putting uh, analyzing the subject itself in the form of questions and answering it and um, as uh, justice uh, uh, narayana sir has said that if you want to learn the uh, what do you call the tp act uh, the what do you call the other um, easement and the muhammadan law contract you know muhammadan law and contract you will have to go to indian more appeals and lahore raud and uh, what not sindh and other thing because most of the cases have been dealt with by the old of the, the those courts and principally people lay down mostly, mostly english judges and ultimately mostly english judges ultimately it is being followed whenever the india the later decisions are coming up that is how the things are happening anyhow it's a good uh, uh, feast on uh, hiba thank you on a sunday thank you very much <laughs> thank you thank you ramachandran sir uh, yeah radhakrishna murthy please you let me mute my god radhakrishna murthy your hands are up uh, so please unmute he is not hearing it appears yeah i think uh, he is uh, he was there but let's see in the meanwhile no yeah he is coming yeah yeah please oh. my god yes yes we can hear he you put his hand for reservation it appears gone out and no, come no, back radhakrishna murthy please yeah yeah sir my question is that uh, actually whether uh, a muslim can he give the entire property whatever he has yes he can give by way of gift provided all the strict rules are followed and provided it is not a marzul mouth no why i have asked me because uh, the uh, their uh, succession 
the succession opens immediately after the death of the person correct, correct. their shares are already defined isn't it yes so whatever it is defined and all then why is that she is entitled one eighth and all so once if we give the entire property and all because she will but have zero they don't have any birthright unlike uh, hindus and all they don't have any birthright yes sir. Not. they do not have any birthright and all but yes. the so far as uh, gifting the entire estate i think yes. that there is a hurdle and all no entire thing that they can't do it because they why their law has come like that because for defining the shares and all tomorrow the siblings the or wife in, it, it, murthy that is the law of inheritance after the death if any property is left behind that is the rule to be followed is it not law of inheritance yes sir. yes sir. but uh, supposing some nothing is left behind he has already gifted the property during his lifetime no even strictly, in the case, no even in strictly the case, following the, the principles no even in the case of a will also one third can be given to anyone hmm. no that's right one, one, one third no Then during the lifetime he has got the right of doing things no no the, sorry sir See, the, and the, in the case of that is why one third restriction in respect of will. Why not? It is not there for gift because, uh, yeah. No, that may be the reason why the exception was given. The gift was exempted from uh, the hard rules of uh, uh, will. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the, even even in the case <laughs> where the the bequest exceeds one third, the after his, be... after his death, the other donors, uh, rather uh, sorry, and the other heirs can give okay. their consent. Validating the request, pro rata validation can be possible. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rajesh Murthy. Najib, over to you. Very excellent uh, session, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rajkumar, sir, as usual. I can't speak much because I'm just recovering back from COVID. I might have omitted various aspects of Muslim gift. I don't know. I am not uh, exhausted. I can't speak much, uh, so I. I'm recovering from COVID and bronchitis. Oh, I can't talk much. Is it a second attack? Yeah, yes, bronchitis is second one. Uh, COVID. You had December an attack COVID. earlier, is it not? Earlier, but bronchitis again oh, it okay. came back. Okay. So no, second day, second day affected the normally affects the uh, lungs the respiratory and respiratory system. Yes, yes, that is my problem. I am uh, facing difficulty in breathing and. Uh, oh, take thank rest, you so much. Thank rest. you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Rajeeb, get well soon and be back on the platform. We are missing you. Soon, sir. Yeah, I think Kapil Damla has put the hand up. Kapil, please. Hello. Yeah, Hello, please. Sir. We can hear you. Sir, can I ask a question from CRPC? <laughs> <laughs> Now that Ram Kumar sir is here, we'll uh, go for an intelligence. Let us see. Let me see whether I can answer it or not without a reference. Okay, please. Sir, a lot of police remand are rejected in Haryana, uh, most by junior magistrate first class. That one six that uh, the word used in one sixty seven are when the accused are not forwarded by sub inspector of the police. No, no. Uh, because sir, one sixty seven uses two word. Uh, officer in charge of police station or police officer making the investigation of police. So you have not heard my class mm. on one sixty seven. The officer in charge of a police station need not necessarily be a police officer. He can be a non-police officer acting under any statute like Customs Act, uh, Narcotic Control Bureau, all those things. They are also given the power of an officer in charge of a police station only for the limited purpose of conducting an investigation. After that investigation, they can only file a complaint, not a police report. That is why one sixty seven uses both expressions: officer in charge of a police station or police officer conducting the investigation. Officer in charge of a police station can include customs officer, etc. That is why Kerala I could way back in nineteen eighty four in the Ayub's case, just as U L Butt held that even a customs officer arresting an offender offender under the Customs Act can produce an accused person. Arrested person before a magistrate, and and one sixty seven one sixty seven is the only power of the magistrate to remand the offender to custody. 
no other power uh, sir another thing is that um, in a police station a lot of police force posts are there or uh, the superintendent uh, give the power of the police post to any person above the rank of constable see <laughs> of officer in charge of police station means a police officer who is holding the gd charge general diary charge supposing it is a head constable he is not a sub inspector or circle inspector or dysp but he is only an head constable if he is put in charge of the station and he is in charge of the general diary general diary means as prescribed under section 44 of the police act 1861 not the crpc the police act that is a general diary or station diary or daily diary that officer if he is put in charge of the general diary he is he is an officer in charge of the police station as long as he is holds the holding the gd uh, yes sir uh, that's why i am asking when the officer in charge of the police station produce the accused before the junior magistrate first class officer and um, superintendent of police see there is no there is no junior magistrate of first class or senior magistrate There's only one magistrate of first class magistrate of second class in kerala sir, second class magistrates have been abolished sir in haryana also second class also also abolished Uh, and there is the one word jmic oh see okay. jmic yes. so uh, i mean to ask that when the superintendent of police given the power of officer in charge of police station above the rank of constable then he can produce the accused before the court even he is not holding the rank of sub inspector police remand still can be awarded to him yes 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 no custody so he, will be normally asked by an investigating officer not by a yes. officer in charge of police station yes officer in charge of police station will usually be the investigating officer holding charge of the investigation also he will be holding the cd a uh, case diary thank, thank you sir thank you thank you just, just because he is a junior officer you can't say that he cannot produce the accused before the magistrate he can produce a, he can be de, he can be delegate also of the officer in charge of the police station because every time the uh, station house officer need not necessarily produce an accused before the magistrate he can delegate his subordinate officer to take him to the magistrate for for uh, custody etc uh, sir i am asking a that question because many of the police remand are declined by the magistrate that sub inspector has not produced the accused before me so sub inspector should himself produce <laughs> yes sir Hmm. Oh, wow. Legally, he may be correct. Technically, in a technical sense, he may be correct. But then, why, why stand on such technicalities without the consent or um, um, tacit uh, under consent of the sub inspector? Will a police constable dare to produce an accused before the magistrate unless he is authorized? Of course, it is not a constable. He may not be a constable. Is it a constable? sir lekin uh, but the crpc uses the officer in charge of the police station and police officer invest direct investigation if yes. yes i told you no officer in charge of the police station need not necessarily be a police officer even he police can officer. be a non police officer he can be. that's why i am asking if the police officer in charge of the police station are himself producing the accused before the magistrate then hmm. requirement of sub inspector is not there requirement of sub inspector is there when any officer other than police officer other than officer in charge of the police station yes because uh, law contemplates investigation crpc contemplates investigation not only by the police but also by non police officers under various statute you refer to uh, deepak mahajan's case ar 1994 supreme court 1775 directorate of uh, Yeah, Enfor- direct, direct Enfor- directorate of uh, enforcement or enforcement directorate of enforcement versus deepak mahajan ar 1994 supreme court 1775 go read the entire decision the very important decision every lawyer every lawyer practicing on the criminal side should know you read that decision it, it has enumerated various statutes under which non police officers have been given the power to conduct the investigation and given the invested with the power of an officer in charge of a police station 
So that he, that from that alone, he cannot get the right to file a police report. Charge sheet he cannot file. He can only file a complaint. But he has got the powers of a police officer for the purpose of investigation, for the limited purpose of investigation only. Ninety-four Supreme Court, seventeen seventy-five. Just note down and uh, read that whole decision. So we have uh, Venkatesh V uh, with the hand up. Venkatesh, can you unmute? Any question in Muslim law? <laughs> yeah, with regard to Muslim. Please go ahead. Uh, I said, uh, I, I, I have two doubts with regard to Muslim law. One is with regard to handing over of position. Yes. Uh, one, when father gives a gift, gift to son. Yes. And son is residing elsewhere. Uh, yes. Out of the property. And <laughs> still the father yes. is residing in the same house. Whether it yes. can be treated as their so, possible. There, there are two exceptions involved in that. If father is residing in the same house. Even if the, the Doni is a, is a son or stranger. stranger, if the stranger is residing along with the father, no, 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 they are both are not no, here the son likewise, is also residing away. Uh, likewise, the son, if, just because he happens to be the son, the, the re strict requirement of delivery person is not necessary. Okay, strict delivery. The father need not. Uh, these are all exceptions to the general rule. These are all yeah. exceptions to the idea. I gave you six, seven exceptions. This is one of those exceptions. Tony and donor residing in the same house. And the second one is, the second one is, when a uh, when a specific law is there guiding the transfer of property of Muslims with regard to gift of property. Yes. And whether can Muslims choose another medium, like uh, if uh, they, they want to write a settlement deed, which which they want to register it. Uh, we, does the law permit them to do so? Yes, sir, because registration is only optional. Option. It is within the option of the person concerned to get it registered or not. Okay. They can definitely choose the section one, the provisions under the Registration Act and the TP Act for executing a document. Of course, they can. Only thing is, Muslims alone have, have been given the power to, the authority to give, make an oral gift. Yes. They yeah, can my, make my, an oral gift. Nobody knowledge. else can give make an oral gift. So, so far as my knowledge, uh, uh, a settlement deed can only be written by Hindus, whereas gift can no be written by anyone. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing. For example, stamp act. Stamp act may be recognizing a settlement act. Stamp act is secular. Did not stamp act uh, applies to both the Hindus and Muslims, all community. So, okay. stamp act may be recognizing a settlement deed. Am I not correct, Mr. Ramesh? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, uh, Aisha has uh, requested for a question. Aisha, can you unmute and put the question? So Mr. R. Chandrasekhar has put a question. My question is, if a Hindu avails fee, a few clause or provision of Hiba in a gift deed, what are the repercussions? Hindu? I think if a Hindu avails few, uh, I mean, clause means he would have think benefits under a, a Hiba. So that is a Doni. A a don, whether, whether Doni can be a non-Muslim. Non yes. If the donor has got a natural love and affection towards a Hindu, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong in a, a Muslim giving a um, gift to a non-Muslim. No, if a motor marriage is possible, <laughs> it can be possible. I think Radhakrishnamurthy want to ask one more question, please, Radhakrishnamurthy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I mean, for this question, non-Muslim cannot uh, do hiva and all. There is a citation in that actually. Which one? Just know someone has posed eh? a non Muslim can do Hiba or not. No, no, non Muslim no, 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 no. To a non Muslim. Muslim, -Muslim. -Muslim. Whether he can be a recipient, recipient of a gift. Doni. Whether he can be a Doni. Hey, he can. Ah, there is a case. That is a, that, is a, that is a question. Yes, sir. He can. He can, is it not? Yes, sir. He can. He can. Okay. 
but he cannot be a donor he, he cannot be a donor uh, another question sir actually see so far as uh, uh, undivided share is concerned usha whether it will be made hiba or not is yes, there any it can be the, the pristine muslim law is that if it is an undivided share and if it is uh, on, only div, uh, undivisible if it is not divisible then only it, there can be a valid gift is the uh, pristine law but courts even privy council has said that it's high time that we and justice krishna has said that it is a moribund law is high time we treat it uh, as dead the dead law therefore according to justice krishna whether it is divide divisible or indivisible indivisible divisible or indivisible if it is undivided share musha can be undivided share a gift of musha can be given see in an undivided share and all basically the other ingredients it will not be fulfilling no because the position has to be delivered and the task that they have to receive no it's an extent to, to, to the extent it is susceptible of there is a rider to the delivery position the there is a rider always always there Con- even constructive position is permissible okay only based on that and all that they can do yes constructive position is there thank you for example property is in the possession of tenant tenant uh, you are giving a gift to somebody else you can ask the tenant to atone to the uh, new landlord new new uh, donee atonement of tenant who is it atonement atonement Aisha, can you unmute and put the question? You are back. I think there is some difficulty with that. Okay. Or you can post the question in the chat if there is any difficulty entering the. Okay, then you can forward it to me. I don't. Yes, I Aisha. Aisha. Here. Habit so, of reading the chat box. No, no, I shall, I shall, sir. Uh, but she had uh, put a request that can I uh, ask one question? Uh, fine. So, sir, uh, no further questions, I believe. Here, yeah. Dilip, sir, please. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> sir, uh, it is see something. It's, it's a revelation regarding the nuances of Muslim law. It is not available in books, also. I mean, unless you go through it in depth. so it was a i mean it's a very enlightening this thing but i have a doubt sir uh, you referred to a case where the joint possession has been reserved in the gift deed joint possession by the donor has been reserved in the in a gift deed and uh, it was uh, decided that that the gift is void or valid not valid in not valid not valid because joint possession and the dealing with the property No, no. Joint possession. Not, not merely joint possession. We will continue to be in joint possession because once they get, it is a transfer inter vivos, is it not? Yes. Gift is a transfer inter vivos. From the very moment of gift, effecting the gift, the donee gets a right to uh, uh, effect mutation, right to deal with the property, yes, etc. Yes. But if that right is uh, uh, restricted, then then the gift is void. Yes. Gift is void. If if only if only a right to a right to reside there till his death, or to be in physical possession till hmm. his death, he is reserved as a life estate or something like that. Right of residence uh, means it it also interferes with the donee's right to deal with the property, is it not? No, supposing no. if if there is yeah yes, uh, not as a life estate, but to uh, I mean the, uh, be there in the in occupation of the building or in possession of the property. Yes, is that till he is there? Then can it not be considered as even if that condition is void or repugnant yes. to the grant and the gift is valid? Yes, that that is one line of ruling. I said there is a contradiction between those two lines of ruling. Right. One ruling says if there is a repugnant condition, the gift is invalid. The other rule line of ruling says the condition shall, the condition shall be uh, rejected. Right. If pregnant condition shall be rejected. If the grant is absolute, grant will be valid. Grant is absolute, then the condition. Okay. That's thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, Dilip sir. Uh, we have a question put by Prasida Prasad. Prasida, would you like to put the question, or should I read it from the chat? You can unmute and put the question. 
in a case of gifting to a minor or a person of unsound mind can mother accept gift in beh on behalf of the donee uh, uh, or maternal grandparents under the muslim personal law if the father is alive father alone can accept but if anybody follows my decision and if there is a estrangement between the parents then probably if the the child is under the care of the mother nothing wrong in the mother accepting it but strictly speaking muslim law recognizes only the father and his relatives as the guardian of the minor his or her if father is relatives sir excellent so we'll take a last question from uh, uh selim kumar uh, selim would you like to put the question or should i read it my mother's uncle orally gifted her land jointly owned by them in 1970 which is already in her possession both donors died in 1975 and 1986 unfortunately no witness is alive now their children want the property back possession is still with us what should be the defense property i, is still I, I, I didn't donors. get the question uh, what is it uh, I, i'll uh, i'll just put it in this way uh, sir my mother's uncle orally gifted her land jointly if, owned by are the, they muslims muslim uh, uh, that's what i could understand from this okay uh, salim himself put say so uh, yeah correct uh, my mother's uncle uh, orally gifted her land uh, mother's their uncle, land uh, uncle their land uh, 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 land jointly owned by them uh, uh. in 1970 which is already in her possession Hmm. Both donors died in 1975. Both in 1986, 1975, 1986 respectively. Unfortunately, no witnesses is alive. Uh, be now, <laughs> now their children want the property back. Possession is still with us. What should be? Who the... children? Who children? Uh, children? I think uh, uh, uncle and aunts. I believe. Okay. The the very fact that the the nephew. nephew was in possession may probably in fact as justice krishnayar put it can be acceptance can be by conduct also mm, that is what proved by conduct put it. what is the quantum and nature of evidence required because yes. uh, circumstances and uh, parole evidence alone yes a uh, mutation is still in the name of uncles no that's not mentioned is it not mm, that is also is mentioned it? my mother is uncle only gifted uh, uh, land jointly last line the... last line uh now their children want the property back possession is still with us what should be the defense property is still in donors name oh it is still in the donors name so yeah, but then uh, these, uh, there are decision which say that mutation is not decisive mm -hmm. even without mutation if delivery of possession has been granted mm -hmm. then merely because there is no mutation effected mm -hmm. that will not uh, um, be, uh, be go against the gift correct Mutation is not the act of handing over possession. It is only an evidence of subsequent possession. That's all. And sir, one last question from M K Abdullah: uh, Is it possible yes. to register a settlement deed to daughters avoiding one son? There is absolutely. Yes. It could be done in any manner because it's gift. The, the sweet will and pleasure. Yes. For the owner. If, uh, if, Sam, Sam, sir. If you uh, would like to ask one more question. If yes, please. Or time only permits. No, no. 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 Okay, uh, that's not with regard to the gift asset, but something to do with the Muslim law. A Hindu male ma after his marriage with another Hindu in Kerala, with with no children from that marriage, goes to Gulf, converts himself to Islam, Muslim, and then marries a girl, a girl from Malabar, and. After going back, he girl girl in the sense it is a Muslim or a Hindu. It's a Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Then girl from Malabar can both. Ah, uh, he he. Then he goes back and then gets killed in an accident. So, in both marriages there are no issues, no children. So to whom will the wife and children, the wife and children of the first marriage can such this. <laughs> But marriage certainly is not dissolved. Is not dissolved by a court divorce, court decree. You know, it's Without... not. It's not dissolved. But the Muslim personal law says that a, a male Muslim Muslim's uh, property, whatever, after being uh, converts to Muslim, 
will the world of phone only is muslim i mean no so, i think there is one decision which says for the purpose of marriage you converted that will not defeat the right of other persons i think recently some some decision i remember but 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 the marriage see see even you, what is the status of the hindu wife that he is, continues to be hindu wife that that is that is, that is what I, i am trying to because see if a man gets converted to muslim after the marriage hmm. or after becoming major then apostrophe is it not apostrophe no no alla 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 i don't know i don't know i think it is apostrophe but uh, among muslims apostrophe is recognized one day a muslim converts into hindu becomes a hindu or uh, some other religion then then it has some legal consequence but And in hindus i don't know whether there is supposed like to be there the person, recognized see a person who has converted to muslim does not lose his yes. right to his ancestral property he can still avail ancestral property from his hindu so what is the status of the first wife ah uh, that that is what i am that is on his I, conversion uh, on his conversion uh, unless unless unless, so unless, so unless no unless she unless files an application for divorce on that ground yes otherwise yes. she remains And, wife because uh, the supreme court has twice or thrice held that without the intervention of the court and without a decree for divorce a, a marriage hindu. cannot be divorced between hindu, hindu or christian hindu or christian marriage cannot be dissolved yes that is there but regarding succession so conversion to another religion will it automatically effect bring about a divorce no will not will not bring about divorce but that is construction i mean succession right to property ah the property is left by a uh, muslim would go to only his muslim yes but uh, property uh, le uh, left behind by a muslim at a time when he acquired the property <laughs> no no at the time when he acquired the property he was a hindu <laughs> but still 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 all his all his properties at the time of his death would endure only to the yes of the muslim yes so, what right. is the law on the uh, regarding the at the time of conversion what what should happen to his properties at the time of conversion i i searched everywhere but i could find that he doesn't lose his right in his ancestral property but uh, will the nature of his holding change that requires not a casual discussion but an in-depth analysis i believe i think we'll defer no, to i think that one decision in respect of bigamy comes i think some discussion is there on this but by, by, bigamy is not possible in when the muslim is entitled no 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 no, 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 no. no, no, no. conversion for, for the purpose of marriage marriage not... uh, will uh, will, uh, will attract that provision it appears i think there is a decision now recently only of the conversion conversion similarly in the case of a, Mus a, Hin a christian nun once she becomes a nun there are two decisions are right two two decisions are one one says that she is, there is a civil death That's civil death another decision says he, she will not lose her right etc yeah, right. that is my myself and um, chidambaresh held a division bench <laughs> correct 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 a division bench yes. and i think that it was not challenged before any court it appears people are generally accepted it appears, that, that appears to be the... what happened to the earlier decision that he, she undergoes a civil death that... thereafter she has no right no, no we have no we have distinguished that decision saying that is a kadi it is not related to inheritance So, sir, we'll defer that uh, discussion to another day. The lips are definitely yes. has to be looked into, and that's a, a really interesting proposition which require in-depth analysis, not just a casual discussion. And especially when we are not on that topic specifically, so we'll we'll deal with that uh, uh, next time. So, it's and uh, unexplored areas of Muslim law, Muslim gift also can be. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely, the contours yes. can be examined, and and for that matter, it was an overview, and it was wonderfully done in the sense like. Uh, the Christians and answers did cover almost all the nuances that at novice, least and an, an novice or a person getting introduced to the subject need and required to know. That was wonderful, and we are grateful for the students of uh, Krishna Jayanti College for joining us today. No questions were put by them, but still, um, it was indeed good. So, no, probably, no, probably they would not have taught uh, uh, Muslim personal law. They would not have. Which is there in the syllabus? It, it is there in the syllabus. It is there in the students syllabus. Students have attended. would not have ah. experienced that uh, classes probably correct, correct. so uh, ram kumar sir thank you very much uh, and as we come to the end of the 252nd session thank you ram kumar sir thank you ramoshin sir uh, thank you all of you and uh, justice uh, uh, kausar kanapagat for the wonderful uh, introductory remarks and narayana sir for the wonderful inputs
thank you all of you for this wonderful session a sunday morning well spent thank you very much till we meet again next yes. time next week yes. so please do take lunch is not delayed lunch is not delayed <laughs> no 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 that's why i did not refer so to that he should sunday. thank me hari sir namaskar for completing it <laughs> well in a, well ahead of lunch <laughs> correct thank you very much okay